the Thoughty Orty podcast. Well, that's that's an interesting part because I know that that mate crime is something that a lot of autistic people might experience. Um, just to, just as a baseline for people who don't understand what mate crime is, it's basically when an holistic or neurotypical individual um, befriends an autistic person or um, starts dating an autistic person with the intention of using and manipulating someone for money, for, you know, any any kind of um, romantic inter- intimacy type thing, um, or, or to do with giving them access to their property and, and um, their spaces. And it's something that a lot of autistic people are quite can be quite vulnerable to, to to because of the the statistics around loneliness isolation um that a lot of us experience so um with that i mean do you have much experience with with this jolly like do you think that there's any aspect <laughs> to yes i guess what, what, what we're talking about that make us make us more vulnerable yeah so yeah Mate crime is similar to a hate crime in that it's also illegal and it is punishable by the law, but it is something that's really hard to sort of pinpoint and actually take action because, well, it's complicated. So, yeah. like, a mate crime is the grooming of autistic autistic or disabled, elderly, otherwise vulnerable people, befriending them with the intention of manipulating them for personal gain, and that can be, like, physical, sexual, emotional. You put it better than me. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah and because it is complicated it's very difficult to spot but it's even harder to hmm. report yeah so like yeah a mate could sort of borrow possessions and like never give them back or they could convince you to lend them money and they have no intention of paying you back they could you could be like oh i'm i've been paid and suddenly you're doing a pub crawl <laughs> and you're paying for everything because they conveniently forgot their pur- purse or whatever or it could be yeah more sinister and the thing is it often starts small because they're testing your boundaries to how much Mm. they can take advantage of you so it will seem like nothing's happening and then suddenly it's like they're taking advantage of you like maybe like not all cases but maybe with like sexual favors or they're moving a relationship on too quickly than than what is actually comfortable but they're sort of coercing and pressuring your consent to make you feel like it was actually your idea when it wasn't and because you know pressured consent is not true consent and coerced consent isn't consent and it's very hard to process that when you're autistic and your consent is so routinely trampled anyway in terms of like unintentional gaslighting where we're taught to sort of mold our consent into whatever people see or see fit like yeah like i'm not consenting to masking all the time or making eye contact but i don't feel like i've got a choice and that's not true consent you know and it's a similar thing for mate crime like i'm not i wouldn't ordinarily be consenting to this sort of treatment but i don't realize it's happening because it's Mm. so so slow and it builds up and also like you said the whole loneliness thing the isolation factor we are so happy to have friends like when it happened to me I was there like grinning all the time like I have friends finally why do I feel so alone so isolated why do I feel like I don't actually have any friends and it's because I didn't I was scared I was alone I was isolated but they trick you into thinking that actually this is the best thing ever and you'd be lost without them but of course you'd be much better off without them (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I've experienced it. <laughs> I the 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 any I I think the the way that I could probably add to that is it's always been things related to to work for me, like with with neurotypicals that I've worked with. Um that that tends tends to be the case, but it, it's it's never like um it doesn't tend to be like quite overt in that way. Um, it's, it tends to be, um, kind of, kind of like a lack of respect or a lack of respect of my autonomy where in, in relationships 
that that have that that aspect to it um so i i remember lots of you know times where i've you know put a lot of effort and a lot of time and a lot of everything into into a certain mm. projects and you know um they've kind of just kept expecting me to to put more and more of my time into it and then when i kind of turn back and say you know this is you know you're not really respecting my time and this wasn't agreed to and things like that they kind of brush it under the rug um or you know they may not value ex exactly and, and take seriously any issues that i might have um as it's you know something that some you know a, a, an autistic man who doesn't understand the situation is being like uh so I've, I've had that happen to me in that sense and then perhaps um some instances where i was at school and people have befriended me or um got into a romantic relationship or not really and uh just used me as kind of like a sense of humor like mm. to to make fun of and and that's part of it mm. like they all like make mates <laughs> will often yeah. use your autism against you and they and they will take advantage of you they will push those boundaries and it will be for personal gain and that can also look like laughing at you because you're autistic and and mm. sort of putting you in those situations that make you like shut down or melt down and then they'll be like ha 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 look at the weird autistic person yeah and it's just it's not nice and that's often how it starts and if it's allowed to continue and sometimes it is because we don't realize it's happening which is so grateful to our friends <laughs> um yeah it can it can get worse it can get a lot worse 